talk to us about your vision for Pepe. You're using 45 million. It's going to be investing. You're already pretty forceful there in Europe. You're coming to the United States. What sort of offerings are you providing at the moment? Hi, Caroline. So what Pepe does is we provide support to employees during health stages in their life, which are very disruptive and can be disruptive to them both at home and at work. So you talked about menopause. Um, that's certainly a big product of ours and what we'll be launching with in the US. But we've offered, we've also launched other services around episodes that we've seen in the market. Things like going through a fertility journey, becoming a parent. Um, and then we've also launched our men's health service, the first of its kind as an employee benefit, and also women's health um, service. And we'll be bringing some of that to the US as well. So you've already got clients, Accenture, Adobe, Canada Life, Disney, to name but a few. What sort of growth are you seeing, particularly as we worry about a downturn in the economy, we think about perhaps companies putting back on benefits? What do you say to that sort of narrative? So we've seen as a business, like you said, in, in, in Europe, we've grown almost 4x um, this year. And what we are really seeing is companies taking much more um, seriously the reasons that keep people um, maybe out of the workplace, absent from the workplace or they're you know causing presenteeism as well um really when you look at these um factors such as fertility becoming parent menopause and so on or maybe living with a, a long-term gynecological condition the business case kind of speaks to itself none of these are niche things mm. so for example in the us um, 20 percent of the us workforce are women aged over 45 typically the age at which you would expect to see menopausal or perimenopausal symptoms um, appear with them so none of these are niche they're all hiding in plain sight in any organization of any size and that makes the business case for itself talk to us just basically how you are tech company in and of itself then because you know uh, we think about treatment we were just hearing from a16z talking about how people perhaps are returning to wanting to have face-to-face in-person meetings with some of their clinicians how are you seeing that you're solving a problem that wasn't solved before so what we realized with peppy is that yes traditional healthcare does a phenomenal job at the point at which you are walking into a doctor's office, be that virtual or physical. And as Vinita was saying, you know, people are wanting to return back to physical. And that's necessary in so many cases, whether that's for examinations, diagnostics, et cetera. But upstream of that, there is a huge gap. And that is a universal gap, regardless of what healthcare system you're in. So think about, you know, when you first start to have concerns, questions, niggles about your health, there's often weeks, months, sometimes even years before you think that concern is big enough that it warrants the effort, the time, the uh, inconvenience of going to see your doctor about it. That's really the gap that Pepe is filling. So what we do is we provide access to expert support. So typically nurse-led, nurse practitioner-led, but they are experts in these areas. So whether that's uh, menopause, um, their women's health, health specialists, whether that's fertility nurses, whether that's midwives um, for baby. What we can do with Pepe and what the tech enables is for you to communicate with those specialists in the way that suits you best. And that could be a video console, but there are so many other options. You can chat to them, you can join virtual events. We have of our own content team that works with our clinicians to put out written video, audio content. So you can imagine the barrier to actually accessing help with Pepe is really low and that's what the tech is enabling. It can be a simple message sent off when you're waiting at the bus stop or you know, just because when you think of something at bed, you browse through some content, um, but always with access to real healthcare professionals on the other end. How hard is it moving from European healthcare provision to US healthcare provision, navigating a different regulatory landscape? How do you envisage that? Yeah, so the regulatory landscape is a, you know, it's certainly something that needs navigating. We are now able to offer the PEPI service in all um, 50 states, which we're really proud of uh, for our clients. And that's important for our clients. As you mentioned, they're some of the leading enterprises you know, globally. Um, that is one difference. But like I said, the really the need that Pepe's addressing, sort of independent of what the healthcare system is, recognizing that the US healthcare system, and I've you know, lived in the States for a while, um, is very different to a lot, what, a lot of what we've seen in the UK, be that NHS or private medical insurance. Like I said, Pepe's designed to complement and supplement 
traditional healthcare. Mm -hmm. We don't overlap, we don't replicate the services that you would get from your doctor, from your specialist or primary care physician. Really what we're about is helping you in that time where you maybe don't need a doctor yeah. yet, or nudging you to go and seek that care if you're maybe hesitant or not sure, or you're, you know, our practitioners think that there's something to be yeah. concerned about. And also being there for you when you come out of that medical care. Marijola, briefly, I mean, we talked about Albion VC leading the Series mm -hmm. B. You had MTech Capital, Sony Innovation. We've had repeat customers, your original, the likes of Felix Capital, Hamro Perks coming back, putting money back to work. I mean, are you surprised you're able to raise this money in this environment? Or is healthcare, femtech, just in its own niche at the moment? I'm delighted. I mean, I'm especially to have the you know continued support of our investors, some of whom have been with us for a number of years now, and Albion, who've known us for a long time, as well as some of the others that you mentioned. Look, I mean, we raised this round in a context where the business was growing incredibly well. We grew 8x in 2021. We grew almost 4x in 2022. Yes, the market is more difficult. Um, I think there is much greater scrutiny of our financial um, financial performance your, uh, and so on. Um, but underlying, you know, the numbers really did speak for themselves.